all right whether you are coming from my class or from the internet somewhere all over the world welcome again to another edition of flip the classroom slash learning from the internet okay um, this is geared towards my algebra 2 class for right now but this is applicable to ALG 1, pre-ALG, etc., trigonometry, and also other higher maths as well. The goal today is to solve zeros of a function by ZPP. I haven't clearly defined what a function is. Um, I've told you before in past videos that it is. you can think of it as an equation. You can think of it as a graph. Shoot, if you go online and look up the definition of a function, there are specific definitions for that. Anyway, we'll just have an equation for now. Uh, by ZPP is zero product property. Basically, um, we're going to have four examples today, and we are going to have numerical answers at the end. So we're not having equations at the end. We need we are actually having answers, numerical answers, like five-thirds or negative one. Okay, let's already jump to example number one. Again, if any time I'm going too fast or you need to slow it down, there's always the pause button. It's just that I don't want to go any longer than this video has to be. Here's example number one. V squared minus 4V minus 5 is equal to zero. Um, your first step for this example is let's factor. Um, it is already assumed that you already know how to factor. There are a couple ways to factor, but let's just do it quickly in this one. Again, if you need to brush up, please brush up on factoring. V squared, uh, only one way to split this up, V squared is V and V. Be careful, your last number is negative 5. So one way to split this up is negative 5 and 1. Multiply it together. Another way is 5 and negative 1. Don't forget that. Okay, which pair adds up to negative 4? It is going to be negative 5 plus 1. So two parentheses. All right, we're going to put V and V over here. And then we're going to put minus 5 and then plus one because that's a positive one equal to zero. Okay, next step is you're going to set each term equal to zero. Okay, set each term equal to zero. What does that mean? That means each of these terms are parentheses. You're just gonna make them equal to zero. So you're gonna have two equations. For this example, v minus 5 is equal to 0, and then v plus 1 equals to 0. Then the last step is you're just going to solve for v at 5, at 5, v is equal to 5. You can box or circle that. Minus 1, minus 1, v is equal to negative 1. And these are your answers for example number 1. Now other teachers in other books prefer you to write in some different ways. You can write it like this depending on your book or teacher. Other books prefer to write it like this, negative 1, 5 in numerical order like that. So either way, please follow your teacher on how to set up the answers. Uh, for my class, this is okay. This is also okay too as well. Here's example number two, along with the ZPP lesson, p squared minus 4p plus 1 is equal to negative 2. Now, if you notice from example number one, there's supposed to be a zero over here. So in general, if you, there is a number or other terms other than a zero on any of one side or the opposite side, you're just going to transfer it. You're just going to transfer all the terms on one side so that the other side is zero. In this case, we're just going to add two on both sides because once we do that, then one of the sides is zero. So that's pretty much your goal. You just once want one side as zero. So when you add two on both sides, then you're going to have p squared minus 4p plus 3 is equal to zero. You are now going to follow the same steps as example number one, where you got to factor this trinomial right over here. So let's already do that as such. We're going to have two parentheses. And there's only one way to split up p squared. It's going to be p and p. All right, this positive 3, let's break it up to two numbers that multiply together to make 3. There's 3 and 1. Also, don't forget, negative 3 and negative 1. But the only pair that adds up to negative 4 is going to be this negative 3 and this negative 1 right over here. Okay, So it's going to be b p minus 3. And then p minus 1. It does not, mat does not matter which order it goes in this case then follow the same steps you're going to split them up each term set them equal to zero so that means in this example we're going to have two equations p minus 3 is equal to 0 and then p minus 1 is equal to 0 solve for p p is equal to 3 
box that and then P is equal to 1 box that and that's the answer for example number 2 here's the third example out of the four for this lesson 10 X squared plus 27 X plus 5 is equal to 0 actually whenever you factor first you should always try to see if you can take out a GCF a greatest common factor if any so look at your numbers first 10 27 and 5 can you divide a specific number by 10 27 and 5 so that these numbers are small nope they don't have any common factors over here except for one now check your variables this is a, this has two X's this has one X and this has no X so we really can't take out or pull off any GCF from here okay then the steps are going to be the same as examples number one and two where you got a factor so here's some fast factoring for you guys over here, 10x squared, you got to be careful because there are some ways to break this one up. You can go 5x and 2x. Also, don't forget 10x and x. Okay, let me just put that 10x right over there. 5, there are two possibilities for 5. You can go 1 times 5. You can also go negative 1 times negative 5. I know some of you guys are using box diamond. Uh, some of you guys are also just going straight reverse foil, which I teach. So let's already do that. We just got to do some guess and check which of these pairs, when we multiply and add them up, adds up to 27. So we just got to figure out which one. Let's start with the first pair. 5 times 1, that's 5, plus 10, because that's 2 times 5. So 5 plus 10, that's 15. That's not what we want. But if we do it the other way, what's 5x times 5? that's 25 and then plus 2 times 1 that's 2 25 plus 2 that's 27 that's the one that we want over here okay so we're gonna take this and we're also going to take these two because those two link up yes I am aware of, uh, for those of you who are not in my class then you may have learned factoring a different way so follow that one instead so basically you just need to factor all right but for um, my class for us your first pair goes on the outside so that's going to be 5x plus 5 your second pair that links up to each other goes on the inside but you just got to make sure that x value over here goes on the second parenthesis so we practice this a lot already is equal to zero same steps now set each term equal to zero 5x plus 1 equals 0 2x plus 5 equals 0 so let's solve this minus 1 minus 1 5x is equal to negative 1 divide both sides by 5 x is equal to negative 1 fifths so yes you can just leave it like that I would rather you guys write it out because sometimes I see it when I correct homeworks is that sometimes a one appears over here and you are supposed to subtract one on both sides so you need to be careful with your signs it's better to just write it out instead of just um, skipping steps same procedure over here on the right side we're going to subtract five on both sides 2x is equal to negative 5 divide both sides by 2 x is equal to negative 5 halves okay just leave it like this as an improper fraction with a negative uh, definitely especially if you're taking some higher math like trig and calculus it's just better to be as an improper fraction of course as always check to see if these fractions are reducible they cannot so these are your answers for example number three here's the last example for this lesson 15 x cubed minus 17 x squared minus 4 x is equal to zero ultimately your first step again for factoring is to see if you can take out a GCF a greatest common factor if you t uh, take a look at the numbers we really can't take out a common factor from 15 17 or 4 but if you check your variables yes we can at least take out 1x from each of them because this has 1x this one has 2x's and this one has 3x's so we can at least at max sorry at maximum we can take out 1x from all three of these terms so let's already do that let's take on an x and so that means with these three terms we are left with 15 x squared minus 17 x minus 4 equal to 0 that middle part just like in the last three examples we are going to factor so this is a somewhat the harder factoring over here 15 x squared we can go here's one 3x and 5x multiply together that's 15 x squared also don't knock off x and 15 x because sometimes that could work over here too your last number over here is negative 4 your last term so you need to be careful we got 2 and negative 2 
that's one way to make a negative 4 multiply together. We also have 1 times negative 4, and also we can also have negative 1 and 4 as well when we multiply it together to make negative 4. Now, we got to do reverse FOIL. Which one of these pairs adds up to not just 17, but negative 17? So we just got to figure out some things over here. I'm just going to make this really quick. I'll try the first one first. Um, 3 times 2, that's 6. 6 minus 10 is negative 4. This is not what we want. We can also try backwards too over here. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. And then plus 10 is positive 4. That's not what we want. So we can just cross off this pair because it's not working out over here. Actually, we should even cross it off because we haven't even tried 15x yet. Well, I'm just going to make this really quick. If I go with 3x and 1, 3x times 1 is 3x, and then 5 times negative 4, that's negative 20. Well, what's 3? Minus 20, that's negative 16. Again, for today's lesson, it's already assumed that you already know how to factor. So again, if you need to brush up on your factoring, this is not the lesson for that. Okay. All right, your first term goes on the outside. So that's going to be 3x, and that's going to be a positive 1. And then your second pair that you have linked up, that goes in the inside. But just make sure that 5x goes over here. So this is 5x and then minus 4. Now, some students tend to forget that this x, you also need to set that equal to 0 as well. So now you have three equations x is equal to 0, so that's 1. 3x minus 4 is equal to 0, that's another. And then 5x plus 1 is equal to 0, that's another one too. Well, we've already got one answer, x is equal to 0, that's 1. Now we just got to solve for these two over here, add 4, add 4 on both sides. 3x is equal to 4. We're going to divide 3 on both sides. x is equal to 4, 4 thirds. Just leave it as an improper fraction. As such, we're going to minus 1, minus 1 on both sides. 5x is equal to negative 1. Divide both sides by 5. x is equal to negative 1 fifth, like this. So you're going to have three answers. Again, I'm just going to also write it in a different format. We can go negative 5, 0, and the four thirds in numerical order like that. And that are those are your answers for example number four.